Welcome to the Detroit Sports Room, your home for Detroit sports news and information. Now, here's Jim. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Detroit Sports Room. And who's in the room today but the hook cam <laughs> all the way from California. That's right, baby. And, and uh, a Patriots fan. Yes, yes. Patriots big, fan. Big Patriots fan. I got the shirt on, actually. Actually, before oh, hey, this... I got the lion shirt. There you Straight go. Straight out of Detroit, man. That's right. Before this, I was like, damn, should I wear the Patriot shirt? I don't know. Yes. I don't want to have people click off right away. Usually, that's no. the response. They won't do it. They won't do it. I've had all <laughs> kinds of people on here so far. All right. Well, not really, but I got a bunch of people planned for here so far, and it's all kinds of different people. But that's the what? first thing is, is I like to go through people's story. And so, mm. uh, number one, for me, uh, to you... Um, give me a story of how you got where you are today. It's a long story. But That's a long story. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll kind of, I'll kind of brief through it in terms of, uh, in terms of football. And, um, so it's actually, it's actually funny. Cause when I was a kid growing up, I played hockey. I played hockey wow. from when I was four to when I was like 10 or 11. And uh, I was a goalie. I loved hockey. I, I, oh my I still gosh, do. I did that too. <laughs> yeah, I, I love playing goalie, man. There's nothing like that, like you against the world mentality. And it's like, hey, it's, it's me against everybody out there. And, you know, you're, you're with your guys. A ton of fun. Even as a kid, even when I was, you know, seven, yeah. eight, nine, it was just it's a great a feeling. Um, but when I went to school and when I was in, you know, elementary school, obviously being a California kid, like nobody else played hockey. It was just me and my friend group. So I actually got a, a lot of, a lot of shade thrown at me because I was a hockey guy and they were kind of like, you know, everybody played football. It was weird. It, it was, it was really interesting because hockey wasn't as big in the Bay area back then. They definitely weren't hockey kids, you know, not, nothing against them for that. But, um, you know, so I played, started playing football in my first year of football, I was, I'm not kidding you. I was the worst player on the team. I was horrible. Our team went 0 and 8. We sucked. I sucked. I sucked on a team that went 0 and 8. And um, for some reason in my head, I was like, you know what? This isn't, this isn't going to cut it. And I was pissed. And I'll never forget. I came off the field. I hate losing, you know, just like any good competitive human being. I hate yep. losing. Yep. Came off the field crying. And I was like, like this sucks. And everybody was fired up because they were getting free hot dogs and stuff. And my, you know, I was pissed. I just wanted to go home. So mm -hmm. You know, I'm angry and my dad's like, hey, when you're ready for me to talk to you, like, let me know. So we're like halfway home and uh, I shut my dad's got the radio on. I shut off the radio and I'm like, All right, I'm ready. What do you want to say? And my dad's like, what are you talking? My dad completely forgot. And I'm like, you told me you wanted to tell me something. So what is it? So he was like, I'm going to be honest. So I'm going to be brutally honest with you. You were the worst player on the field. And I was like, OK. And I was like, well, I, I want to get better. I'm going to play again next year. And my dad's like, whoa, 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 pump the brakes. <laughs> like, you want to play again after that? And I was like, yeah, I want to play again. And so he was like, all right, you have to, you have to work out. You have to run. You have to lift. You have to put in the time. And um, I did that. I, I ran. I lifted. We lifted. We lived on a dead end street, you know, um, just lucky, I guess. And I, I ran. I lifted. I, I did everything I needed to the next year. Um, started both ways. And we're talking about, you know, me being in sixth grade at this point we started both i started both ways offensive and defensive line and um you know slowly in my friend group i became kind of the best football player which is really cool for for me to say um and uh fr from there went to high school i went to sarah high school in in san mateo which is um where tom brady went you know humble brag oh, wow. I, I yeah yeah i went to the same high school and it's actually kind of crazy this high school because Sarah that we've got, you know, Brady went there, Barry Bonds went there, Lynn Swan went oh. there. It's, it's a pre David Bakhtiari. I know he's a, he's a Packer, but he went there. I actually played with him a, a very minimal amount. Um, but we, we have this kind of insane football tradition. And I remember my dad kind of worked in the area where the high school was at a little bit farther South, but, um, and a lot of the guys who he was working with, he told me, he was like, Oh, there's no way he's going to play there because it's got this insane football alumni. And um, I go there, I start at center and, you know, that's kind of where my football career, you know, in a way took off, um, which led me to college. I went to a small college in Oregon, uh, Willamette University. And that's, you know, I was always plagued with injuries. I've had five surgeries. Um, I've Ooh. had th three shoulder surgeries um, on my I right shoulder. On yeah, it's, it's just been <laughs> just getting cut time and time again. So by the time I was in college, I was banged up and, you know, a, a number of other factors that, you know, really led for me having a, a, an underwhelming college football career. And I, I should have been a lot better. I didn't put in the time. I didn't put in the work. I kind of lost touch with what got me there. 
And um, that, that really hurts. It's, it's, it's tough for me to sit here and talk to you about because it's like I look at it and I'm like, dude, I had everything going for me that I could have. I was moving in the right direction. High school was great. I had a great high school career. Um, but I just, I just didn't put all together when it really mattered. And, uh, after college, I was like, I still want to be involved in the, in the game. I want to coach. And, uh, I tried to go and coach at the school I was at. They said no. So I, I moved down to Southern California cause I was the only place that said yes to me and coached at a, a small D3 school down here. And, you know, it's really where I kind of figured out how to work and, and, you know, be, be a, a an adult and a, and a working human being. And, you know, being in the office at 5.30 in the morning and leaving, you know, by nine on Sundays and, you know, stuff like that, where it's like, mm-hmm. it, it really taught me how to work. And it, it, it wasn't a, a regular coaching job where in the sense of like, oh, you know, you're, you roll in by, you know, 8.39, you're out by, you know, practice at 3.30. No, it, this was like football, football university is kind of the way I think about it, because I, I literally ate, slept and drank football. It was all football. And that's really where I attribute a lot of my knowledge to is, is that. And um, a couple of years into that, and I was like, you know, I, I don't want to be in the college game. I want to go to high school. So I coach at high school and, you know, right now I'm trying to get a law degree. So it's, um, it's been a really, really weird path. It's been a really weird path. Um, but, you know, I, I'm here now and, um, you know, do, I don't know if we want to get into, I feel like I'm rambling right now. You haven't asked me, no, I, no. I feel bad. Why are you feeling bad? Man, I don't know because I, I, I just hear myself talk so much. I don't know. I feel get uncomfortable <laughs> after a little bit. <laughs> it's about you. So, yeah, yeah maybe yeah, I want you to talk yeah, just right. a little bit. Um, no, you were talking about people that come out of your thing and, and, and your area and stuff like that. So I live in Muskegon, Michigan, and we had a team called the Lumberjacks hockey team. So I, I just love hockey. I think it's my first love outside of football. Mm-hmm. And we I'm the Mark same Ricky way. play here. Um, oh, the wrecking ball, right? Yeah. Yeah. We were he the was number one farm stunt. team of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Wow. We had Chris That's Neal awesome. here for a cup of coffee and a couple other guys that made the NHL and Frank Angelo played goaltender for uh, Pittsburgh. Oh, okay. Yeah, all played here. And so we, we have a pretty good hockey tradition in in, uh, in our area. So, mm-hmm. you know, we've had just tons of players that have moved up to Grand Rapids and, you know, they go to the Red Wings and all this other stuff. So it's been fun watching uh people grow here and then and then move up kind of like you were saying you played a little bit with Bakhtiari and I'm like that's that's amazing to me yeah so with Bakhtiari so we had a um so actually north of San Francisco is a county called Marin and they have a school Marin Catholic which is where actually Jared Goff went um and so I'm pretty sure that at this I was a sophomore when Bakhtiari was a senior and um, I got like two or three snaps with like the starters when we went to that camp. Literally, it was like two snaps. And I was like, that's David Bakhtiari right there. And he, he's actually got an interesting story because coming out of high school, he didn't get any offers. It was weird. Wow. Like it, it, literally the one school, obviously Colorado, um, but the other school that was like talking to him was like Sacramento State. Sac State, I think, offered him like a walk-on. They were like, you can have a walk-on spot. He was like, wow. I'm not going to Sac State. And so he ends up going to Colorado, absolutely balling out, yeah. um, and then goes to uh, – then then gets – picked up by the Packers and he's he's their guy I mean he yeah. just, he's yeah. signed I think two big extensions and yep. absolute stud and uh f- phenomenal guy by the way just a goofball just like uh, <laughs> he's like got to be guys. he's <laughs> got to be just a great locker room guy because he I mean he was at Sarah he like I, I said mean, he was I, just I, just full disclosure I hate the Packers with all my heart yeah but I don't hate the players. You know exactly. What I'm it's yeah. just kind of yeah, the organization yeah. and how how things get handed to them and you yeah. know stuff like that that I don't like. But I have nothing against the player. Well, maybe Rodgers. I don't really. Yeah. Like that, but, <laughs> you know, there's there's players that I don't like. We talked a lot before about pro football focus. I wanted to get into mm-hmm. that just a little bit here. Pro football failure, whatever the, whatever the acronym stands for. <laughs> right. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about the, your time there? Yeah. So I, I honestly don't even know if I would call it time there. It was, um, <laughs> I was, coffee, huh? <laughs> yeah, it, legit. It was, it was probably a cup of coffee. So basically um, I, let's see, it was probably, uh, it was over a year ago now. And I was like, Oh, I was kind of looking into the analytics side of football. And I was like, it'd be really cool to get involved in that, you know, the numbers for it. And um, they, I, I just literally was clicking around on their website and they were like, Oh, we have job openings for, it was, it was basically for like film breakdown. And so I get the packet, I download the stuff, I'm fired up, tell my girlfriend, I'm like, oh, this is really cool, like right up my alley and feeling good about it, breaking down film for them. And basically the way they have it set up is they'll, excuse me, they'll send you college film 
and they'll be like, all right, break this game down full game, first quarter, first half, whatever. So the way that they call things wasn't the way I had learned to call things at, at the university I was coaching at. And so, and, but the way they call things isn't the way that football, like football guys call things. Like nobody calls a left end outside LEO. Like nobody calls them that. They could say no. it's a nine tech. It's a five tech. You know what I mean? It's, it's yeah, all yeah. in that lingo. So that was like difficult for me to kind of wrap my head around. And, um, you know, I made it through the three stages and they were like, all right, final stage, like break this down. And, um, I broke it down and obviously like I, I coached college football. Like I, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not an idiot. I know what I'm talking about. So right, right. I'm breaking the stuff down and I'm, I feel good about it. I send it in. I'm like, this is cool. I'll, I'll like, I'll be able to do this kind of on the side as I go. And I was, um, you know, kind of in contact with this other, you know, YouTuber who is, who works for him and he was a big pro football focus guy still is. And I was like, Oh yeah, I'm trying to, you know, do this during law school. And I'll be like, Oh, it's a, you know, good gig for you to have. And they send me the email back and they basically were like, Hey, like you weren't accurate enough in your breakdown. And I was like, what? I was like, what do you, I, I was, I was honestly, I was kind of offended. I was like, what do you mean? So whenever that happens, I don't want to just be like, you know what, screw these guys and, you know, talk about them. Like, I, I don't want to do that. So I emailed them and I was like, Hey, is there anybody? I, I emailed them and I was like, Hey, I, I know that you guys are busy. Like, is there anybody that I can talk to? And uh, the dude emailed me back and he goes, yeah, all of us are busy right now. You can call like our, our 1-800 helpline. And I was like, what do you, I was like, you don't even have the time of day for me. Somebody who contacted you to work for you, to be a busybody, to go do stuff. Right. You don't even have the time of day to like, give me a phone call, like a phone number, nobody that I could actually talk to. So, that was really kind of the the origination and the the um the start of like my youtube stuff because from there i was like i, I don't need these guys like I, I don't need pro football focus to go and break down film i can do it myself so yep absolutely from there i my girlfriend's got this microsoft uh office tablet that i was using to break stuff down and i pushed that thing to the limit um <laughs> breaking down film and i was doing you know a number of things and putting stuff out on youtube and now when i would put the breakdown on football team on like you know the new england patriots reddit and then you know people would get clicks on it and they would you know write back to me and comment and all that stuff and i was like this is really cool like i enjoy doing this and then honestly from there man it just kind of took off you know and it was it grew from i didn't want to just do patriot stuff i wanted to branch out and do other teams so i was just kind of honestly it, it ended up me being like i'm gonna break down a a number of different teams. I'm basically going to throw everything out the wall, see what sticks and go from there, you know, and I'm still in that process, you know, for, you know, 4,000, however many subscribers I have, it, it's, it's not that many and there's always room to grow. There's always room to improve. And there it's is. like, that's one of the things that I think is so important about football is that like, I, I, as much as I know, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I don't yep. know a lot about football. There is always a yep. counter to a counter. There's always. Yep. So it's, um, I don't, I don't ever want to come across cause that's kind of the, one of the things that I noticed about football, like NFL, like not NFL guys, but YouTuber guys who are football guys is that they always kind of come across as like a, this is the gospel. I have the answers. And it's like, mm -hmm. I never wanted to be that. I wanted to be like a, this is what I see. You know, and it, like, I, I'm not going to be, uh, you know, an ass about it. Chances are I'm right because I, I know what I'm talking about, but I could be wrong. Like, I've been wrong yep. in videos before. I'm not going to pull too. down the video. You know what? I, yeah, it's like, right. I'm, people are wrong sometimes. So it's, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. It is what it is. You know, move on. Tell me one thing. Tell me this. Okay. So we are, you're our honorary Lions fan. Yes. <laughs> now, yes. tell me how that happened. So this is a good story. So there is a, a guy that I actually do work for on YouTube now, Jackson Kruger Sports. Good, a quick plug for him. Great guy. And um, he had put out a video about Rodgers in the NFC Championship game. And he had put out, you know, a number of things on it. And I watched the video and I was salty. I'm not going to lie. I was jealous. I was salty. I wasn't in, you know, I had moved on from that. I don't want to light people up to getting turned down by pro football focus. And then just honestly... <laughs> right being salty that I didn't have, you know, however many subscribers would have made me happy. And so I see him, he had like 19,000 subscribers at the time. And I like lit him up, like in a comment, I wrote down every play, everything that I saw and like why he was wrong basically. And then at the end I, I put in like, can't believe this guy has 19,000 subscribers Ooh. on that comment. Luke hits me up and you know, this is, and Luke hits me up and he basically says like, look, you have X amount of subscribers. I think I had like 600 at the time. He was like, you have, you know, 600 or whatever subscribers. That's good. 
but like, don't light this kid up, try and have a conversation about it. And I remember I, I had walked into the gym and I had seen that tag, that comment, it popped up on my phone and I was like, Hmm. And I was like, I literally, I was sitting there like, I, there's two ways I can go about this. I can lash out at Luke and try yep. and light him up yep. or I can sit on this, think about it and go from there. And I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to wait. Usually I have a lot more of a clear mind after I go and work out. So go through my workout. Literally I'm sitting in the sauna and I type back to him and I was like, you know what? You're right. I came in a little too hot, my bad. And I would love to have a conversation. And literally from there, Luke and I started, you know, going back and forth on the, in Jackson's comment section. And I was like, I don't want to just like blow this kid. You know what I mean? Like I didn't right, want to do right, that. Right. So I was like, what's a good way to in contact. Next thing I know, you know, I'm, I'm on a round table and I'm doing stuff yep. with you guys. And the next thing I know, Jackson's putting out like a, Hey, do you guys, he put out a video that was like, I, I, I want to bring people on to, you know, make content for my channel. I hit him up and I was very honest. I was like, look, I left this comment on your video. I'm sorry. I was a douchebag, like my bad. Um, if you want, I would love to do co content with you. And he was like, yeah, absolutely. And we've talked about it, you know, and he still, he still, you know, you know, gives me jabs here and there, like you know, <laughs> internet troll, YouTube troll. And um, he's a phenomenal guy, man. He's such a good dude. I can't say enough good things about him. And I like, I still feel bad. I'm going to be, I'm not going to lie. I still feel bad to this day about, you know, writing that comment, but it's a great, but the thing is though, is that it's like, if I looked at that and had the malice and had the, Oh, I can't, you know, I, whether it was, I can't believe that, you know, he would say this or, you know, I, I wouldn't, this, you can't go through life just trying to make enemies. You're not going to get exactly. anywhere. Right. Exactly. Like if you were wrong about something, man up to it. Like, yep. okay, I'm wrong. Like, I'm sorry. Like 90% yep. of people are going to be like, yeah, you were number one, number two, <laughs> don't let it happen again. Number three, we're good. Let's move on. And that's exactly what happened. The one thing I love about the DSA, and I don't bring it up enough in, in this because this is a separate thing I'm doing for, for this channel, but mm -hmm. but the one thing I like is that we have a bunch of leaders in there. It's not one guy that's just the, the leader and this and that. I mean, right. we all have a little bit of a part to play and, and things like that. But when it comes to making decisions, there's good debates that go on, and, and, I, and they're all healthy. I mean, all yeah. healthy debates and, and stuff like that. But everybody's very civil and very... Um, I know supportive of each other even if we even if we disagree about something just vehemently then yeah same thing you know like like yeah. you said there's correct ways to go about things you know and i we just want to talk football and me and now i'm talking hockey and <laughs> I'm soon yeah. pistons and all this other stuff too so it's been it's been a ride man it's been a really really good ride so yeah well, i'm gonna get into a little lions with you it's fine. Let's do it. See what you think, man. So my, my second this team, team right man, ESPN's like got them rated low. I mean, some people think they're high. Some people think they're low. Yeah. I have my problems with this team and weaknesses and stuff. But can you give me a quick breakdown of what you think the Lions are headed into this uh, maybe season? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think that, you know, with Detroit and, you know, Luke talks about it a lot. And I, I feel like his thing and kind of everybody's on that same page of like, hey, it's it's time for Patricia to take charge. Like if, yes. if this is this, if this is the hill you're going to die on, right. You've got your guys there. Now you've got the pieces in place. Like let's start seeing some results. And that's really where I see this Lions team as is it's time to put up or shut up. I personally, and again, I, I'm an outsider looking in. I, I think that this team, when you look at the guys in their division, and this is kind of the way that I look at it and the way that I've, I've kind of heard other NFL guys, coaches talk about it, is like, hey, it, it starts with being the best in your division and getting into the yes, playoffs, winning in division games. Mm -hmm. I think that this team is ready to do that. You know, I, I look at what the Packers did first and foremost in the offseason, and I look at them and I'm like, you, the, the Green Bay Packers actively made the decision to not go and get 12 help. And yep. anytime that ha I haven't seen a situation yet where clearly there needs to be some receiver help that you need help at the skill position. They say, Nope, we're not going to do it. And instead of doing that, right. It'd be different if they were like, you know, we didn't get the receiver help, but we drafted Patrick queen, or we didn't get the receiver help, but we drafted this freak defensive lineman. Like, Hey, we yep. we're building this defense. That's where our focus yep. is. That's different. They draft his, his backup, his, his, the heir to the throne. Yep. So to me, I looked at that and it, it's really tough for me to sit there and say, yeah, Rogers is going to be really okay with like Rogers. I'm sure is happy. No, I don't see that. I think that Rogers looks at himself like any great quarterback does. And they say, I'm the best chance for this team to win. Go get me the help. And I'm going to put us in a position to win every football game. And they but decided to not do that chip on his shoulder too. Right. And he could so, be better than he was before because he's, 
pissed off because of the fact that, yeah. that they did that. Now I'm going to show you type thing. It could and be. It could be worse for our division. Yeah. But I don't yeah. know. I don't yeah. know for sure. But I there's... agree with you on the assessment, though. Right, and so I look at what the Lions did in the offseason, and they, they go and they, they basically told Patricia, if these are the guys you want, we'll go get them. They went and got those guys, and it's now it's time to put up or shut up. The, the skill positions in Detroit don't worry me. They, they have a great receiving core. They have a great young tight end. Their quarterback is an – everybody knows I'm a Stafford guy. I'm a big Matty Stafford too. guy. Um, and really, to me, I, from watching film, their problem was the guard position, which they went and addressed in the draft. And, and like, you you can't hate on that, right? They go and – they didn't they didn't overdraft for a guard, which I think would have pissed people off. I think they took the right guys for that position. Um, and they're going to build from there. And defensively, yeah, they have, they have some things that they can work on. But at the same time, you, you look at the guys who they went and picked up, they, they – kind of address their defensive line with a guy like Danny Shelton, who is, to me, Danny Shelton's under the radar. I think he's coming off of literally his best season of football in New England. He, he played very, very well last year. Um, you know, linebacker-wise, yes, they can definitely get better. But with their DBs, they go and they get Deron Harmon. They bring in yep. Jeff Okuda. So there, there's a lot of things that I think they have going in the right direction. And you look at the trend of the other teams in their division, and you look at, like I said, with the Packers, I think that they're trending down. You look at the Vikings. I think that they lost a lot. People, like, aren't yes, talking about how much the Vikings lost. Yep. Their corners are going to be an issue next year. They they're they're going to be a problem. They're too they're young. I think they're going to get torched by the other receivers in this division. It's going to be an issue. And then you have the Bears, which you know no shade against Chicago, but they're they're a team that that's going to have some problems as well. We don't even know what's going on with Trubisky. Trubisky. No. Their offense. It's like I, I think that it, there were problems schematically with how they were calling it. Now they they can change that absolutely. But at the end of the day, we got to see it on the field. So I think essentially what I'm saying is I think the Lions are trending up at the right time because I think the rest of the NSU North is trending down. I really agree with you. My next question is about Matt Patricia. Mm -hmm. Do you think he's capable of being a head coach at this level? Um, I, I, I wasn't really thrilled with his defense in New England, to be quite honest about it. Right. And uh, to bridge that to being a head coach um, – there's a lot of us that don't think he has what it takes. What do you think, being a New England fan and seeing him there, what do you think about Coach Patricia? I think that um, it, it's, it's, it's a tough question because you see so many New England guys who come out of that New England system, and I think that GMs, they, they pick them up, and they're like, they're going to put in the Patriot way here, and it's going to work. And it's like, well – for the Patriot way to work, first off, it doesn't work if just one guy is doing it. The Patriot way is all about having a whole team that's putting the team first, right? And I talked about this the other day with my – and we'll, I'll get off on a tangent if I go through that. I still think that he values the individual, though, and I think that's very key in the NFL today. Um, but with Matt Patricia, like I said, it, his defense in New England worried me because he, I talked to a couple of guys about this who coach, and they were like, he plays the numbers. So if you – if you show that, you know, we're, they're going to run a power that's going to hit the B gap, you know, you know, whatever, 60% of the time, he's going to stack guys in the B gap and which leaves other gaps open. So that worries me. But at the same time, he put together – the one thing about Patricia that I loved when he was in New England was his second-half adjustments. And that was one of the things that I always looked for with New England is, you know, how are they going to do in the postseason? If by the second half of the season – you could see them make adjustments at halftime and they could be able to give their offense a chance in the second half to go up and put up points. That's when I knew, okay, New England's going to go on a run right now. If they weren't doing that and they were still giving up, you know, 20 plus points in the second half, we got some problems, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's really the thing. Do I think Patricia can do it? Yes, I do. Because I think that he is a, a very, very smart individual. And I think that he knows how to be a player's coach. He graduated from uh, uh like he literally, I think he graduated with like an, a, an aeroscience degree. Yeah. Like he the dude's really smart and, and that goes a long way in football. Um, with, uh, I, I, I don't know, man. I, it's weird because he's in this position where it's like you had guys in Detroit who probably didn't mesh very well with Patricia. So yeah. those guys were, were moved out. And Darius Slay is a great example of that. Like him and Patricia probably didn't get along that well. Yeah. So what are you going to do? Keep this guy there who's definitely a great NFL talent, but who doesn't mesh well with the coach and ultimately might be a negative on the team? Or are you going to move him, get some draft picks, and try and replace that, which is what they did. Um, 
I think Patricia can be a good head coach, though, and I don't think that uh, the boat's gone on that yet. I really don't. I, I think that this year is going to be very, very telling for him, though. Very it's telling. It's just for me, I have trouble with this clock management uh, ideas, I guess you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Uh, although his use of timeouts, I don't really like. And you said halftime adjustments. Mm-hmm. We were like the worst team in the third quarter last year. Yeah. I, we just came out flat most of the time. Um, we would have the lead. We'd lost. Uh, we had, we're in the lead in 14 games last year. Yeah. I heard uh, uh, right or wrong said that when you guys were on the round table the other day, and I was like, yep. dude, and, that, that's – And for me, that's not good halftime adjustments yeah. for me. That, that doesn't work for me. And 12 men on the field a lot. There's just boneheaded penalties that you can trace back to coaching. Yeah. You know? No, not that's necessarily that's where it is. That it's his responsibility to have 12, you know, 11 guys on the field, but that's the people underneath him that he's supposed to be leading. And so, I did guess he. My question is his leadership. Yeah. yeah. So, the other thing is, is that did did he kind of redo their, their, their coaching staff this year? Because I feel like yes. I remember hearing that. Yep. So, that's New a big defensive deal. Defensive coordinator, linebacker yeah. coach. Um, so, like that, that's a, that's a really big deal to me because. <sighs> It's it's just weird, man, because it's like, as a coach, and as I'm sure as a head coach, I've never been a head coach, but I'm sure as a head coach, you can go in and be like, hey, these are the adjustments we need to make. You know, not necessarily that it's like you don't trust your your position coaches to go and get that message across, but if those guys don't believe in what you're doing, I mean, it, it's tough to keep that mm-hmm. ship together if you don't have instant success, which was, wasn't was going to, let's be honest, that wasn't going to happen in Detroit with Patricia. No. Right? Like, he wasn't in a position to come in and go, you know, 10-plus wins and make the playoffs. That's it, It's tough to go and well, do the that. The bad thing was is that Bob Quinn came out and said when he got rid of Caldwell, he said mm-hmm. that 9-7 and seven basically wasn't good enough. It wasn't really a direct quote that way, but, I mean, that's the gist of what he was saying. You know, we need to be more competitive. We can't just be 9-7. and seven. We need to, you know, build, we want a championship here. And then he said nine wins in two seasons. Yeah. It, the yeah, it's is not happy. Tough to go and put that onus on him. <laughs> you know what I mean? As the other yeah. coach is going out, you bring the new guy in. I'm sure Patricia wasn't like, dude, thanks for saying that. You know what I mean? Yeah, like right. that's you know what I mean? Like, okay, cool. Right. Now you go and give me give me that to live up to with the team that's, you know, had a tough time hitting that success. So ultimately I do think Patricia I, I like I said, this is a make or break year for Patricia and this and the, the entirety of the Lions right now for yeah, Bob Quinn, for Patricia, for all those guys. Like, yep. dude, we've given you the tools. The tools are there. If you yep. can't do it after this, I'm sorry, man, but you got to go. And then so, if he's gone. I mean, his defense doesn't really translate that well mm-hmm. to other defensive coordinators, and I think it's going to be a pretty much almost complete rebuild if we have to. It's, it's going to be it, it will be tough but um it, because new england's the, the, what they do defensively is very unique you don't see it a lot right you see right. their base is different than other guys base they're yep. everything they do is, is is much different so but i mean like i said man he's now now is the time you have the guys in in position you have the position coaches you want you have the Duran Harmons, the danny shelton's the trey flowers now let's see some results. And that's why I, like, I believe in Patricia to go and do that because I've seen him, like, I've seen him put together these, these defenses where it's, it's very bend, don't break. Yeah, absolutely. But that can win you football. New England's won Super Bowls with that philosophy of, okay, we're, gonna, we're okay with you dinking and dunking down the field. But when that field gets short and you're inside the 20, you're not going to have that. We're going to play very disciplined and it's going to be tough for you to gain those yardage to put up yeah. six. So, yeah. It's uh, like I said before. It's it's time to put up or shut up. But I believe Patricia can do it. Absolutely. I think the one thing the Lions have lacked through this because and, and this does speak to the defense. So, so uh, I think it's the lack of a running game that really hurts us in in in, in so many different ways. Mm-hmm. Stafford's been amazing, just yeah. freaking amazing. But think of what this guy would have done with a running game. Yeah. In, in his tenure, I don't know if you do these numbers, but in his tenure as a, as a Lion, you know, average. 26th in the league in the run in running yeah five years without a hundred yard rusher he's had it's crazy defense is averaging 21 21st ranked in the league yeah it's somebody said the other day on the round table they were like stafford is 10 and 2 i want to say was the numbers when he has a hundred yard rusher in his career and i'm like that means that he's had a hundred yard rusher 12 times in his career how long has this dude been he's he's been in the league for 
2009 uh, when we drafted him. Yeah, so he's been in the league over a decade, right? About to be over a decade. Yep. So it's like and over dude, 12 decade, times. He's only had 12 times he's yeah. had a yard rusher. But let's so get rid of him because that's what most people are. Yeah. I, I just yeah. can't understand that stuff. But anyway, so now future time. What do you okay. see for yourself going forward? I know you're going for a law degree, so yes. I mean, maybe you can figure out well, if the NFL is going to play this year. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> use that for some, for something. But yeah, but what about your channel and what about your coverage of football in general? Uh, where do you want to see that going? You know, that's kind of the the cool thing and the scary thing for me is because I look at it and there's a gigantic question mark on it. I I don't know. I I honestly don't. I know that I love making videos i love putting the breakdowns out there i love you know doing roundtables and stuff um and i'm gonna like i don't it's it's scary because i don't know where it's gonna go and how it's gonna necessarily mesh with what whatever my law degree brings but at the same time like it's it's fun because i still love doing it like there's still that love for like all right let's find clips let's go through let's go through these you know it's i got, I got a derrick henry video coming out it's like all right let's go through this with a fine tooth comb let's see what these guys do well because i like i love football at the end of the day i love football you know i'm still coaching still coaching high school i still i still love it i love everything about it so um, you know, with where my channel is going to go, I don't know, to be honest with you. I, I don't know. I, I know that I have a, a, a strong Chiefs following, which is really funny to me. Um, <laughs> but the, the, the guys who are, you know, you know, always there on my channel are just like always commenting on my stuff are great people. Like they're always like, Hey, you got a friend in Kansas city, you know, come out whenever yeah, a couple yeah. of my really good friends out here are diehard chiefs fans. So um, it's, it's, it's exciting in, in that sense, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see where it meshes with what I'm doing. I, I have no idea what I'm going to do with this law degree. I have yeah, no I, idea. I see, I see, I see the hook camp sports agent. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, that's, that's, you know, one of the things that I'm really interested in is, is getting into the agent field. It's, see? Um, See, I'm good, ain't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's um, <laughs> it's it's tough to break into from what yeah. I know, um, and that's kind of you know, it's almost like a worry I have is like, oh man, like are people gonna you know watch my breakdown? That's why I don't like talking bad about people because you never know who you're gonna run into, yeah, um, true. you know. But it's it's uh, I, I don't know, man. I'm excited to see what happens. I really am, and Me you know, too. with what, what Jackson's got going over at his channel, he's got you know a, a ton of support, and he's you know working up to to 50,000 right now which is phenomenal so i know it's crazy and um you know he's he's kind of building a little a little sports empire himself so yeah, right now i'm just kind of plugging along and seeing where where the, what the future holds and it's it's a big fat question mark i wish i had a better answer for me and for you yeah, so i could okay. sleep a little bit better at night it's you know okay. i picked it up <laughs> i picked it up right away man yeah <laughs> <laughs> no uh, but here's a question i thought would be very interesting because you know you, you have the chiefs fan base and you have the patriots fan base and you have the lions fan base yeah what differences do you see between those organizations and their fan bases really interesting um so new england i i think it's a very new england thing for it to be pessimistic it, it in a really weird wow. way yeah new, new england so like that. yeah so like my dad like there's a very pessimistic boston fan that kind of died out after you know once this run of success for all boston sports has started to come along but that pessimistic like new england fan is still still there um so th there's kind of that pessimism with new england but i st i think that like like the cam newton signing i think was exactly what the organization needed like you needed to inject excitement and you needed to inject this dude who it like he says he's a dog he's an he's a mad dog right now trying to go and prove people hey i still got some left so i like i love that storyline I love the, like, I'm going to bet on myself because I trust myself to get the job done. That stuff, like, it, that gets me so fired up. So I think that, you know, with, with that kind of spin with New England, I think that there's some excitement. Um, with Kansas City, it's kind of funny because they, in a lot of ways, are like, so now what? Because it's been 50 years since, like, their first Super Bowl, and now they're kind of like, wait, wait we did it. What now? And I think the chiefs are, are building the chiefs are building a, a, what could be a dynasty for years to come. And people, I don't necessarily, if people don't want to acknowledge that, but there's definitely that like, Whoa, things could really blow up for Kansas city. Um, and, and I think there's a lot of, it, it, like I said, it's kind of like, you know, with my channel where it's like, uh, we don't know. And that's kind of the whole thing with Kansas city. They, they don't know. They're like, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, and with Detroit, it's, you know, Detroit's weird. Detroit's kind of breaching into that cautiously optimistic phase where, 
you know, I'm, I pump Detroit's tires because I really do believe that this is going to be a breakout year for them. I, I, think, I think Detroit has every chance in the world to go and win the NFC North. And I think it's tough for, you know, people, you know, fans like you and Luke and, you know, the roundtable guys to be like, okay, here's our breakout year because it's like how many times have you been fed that story, right? And how many years has there been the, okay, this is the year, this is the year, this is the year. Two years. And, uh, we what was it? nine and seven and it's yeah like, that's not good enough we got this new coach he's got this great defense his plan and he's gonna change every every game for and and do a whole defense for every team and we're like yeah. whoa this looks cool you know right and we were thinking wow i mean they were nine and seven last year and they upgraded holy cow I mean, we could really do something right what now Six you know and ten yeah so with with Detroit, I think it's it's weird because there's that mix of like cautious optimism with yeah right. Um, <laughs> it really is. It, you know what I mean? It's like there there's some people like me, like I'm I'm new to the Lions fan base and to you know uh, like next year I I will make room to watch every Lions game next year, whether I watch it live or whether I watch a replay of it. I'm going to watch every Lions game next year. Yeah, you said so next from, year. The, well, this year. What, I'm sorry. I always get that mixed up. <laughs> no, I mean, because a lot of people don't think we're going to have a season. I know, which is, I don't know, man. I, I think that the NFL is going to find a way to make it work. I really do. I, I don't, I, 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 but again, like I'm, there's that dumb optimism as well. We talk about cautious, uh, cautious optimism. There's dumb optimism. And you can call me a dumb optimist because I, I need football. I, we, I hope we to... call that hopium over here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, like I said, I hope to God that there's a season. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, who knows what's going to happen with that, but, um, but yeah, like with, with Lions fans, like I said, I think it's a mix of cautious, cautious optimism and okay. Yeah. We've, we've heard this story before. Let's see, see it. Finally. That's why I wanted to compare because the chiefs just won the Super Bowl. You mm -hmm. guys are very used to being very successful. They mm -hmm. just had success. Detroit hasn't had success. Well, well, ever in the Super Bowl era. <laughs> We've never won the NFC North. I don't know if you yeah. knew that. I did not know that. We have never won the NFC North. We won the wow. Central when it was the Central and Tampa Bay was here. Okay. We have never won the NFC North. I think it's 27 years, 28 wow. years. There's That's only four time. teams. We've never won it. Yeah, that's a long time. That's what I said, man. It starts with yep. winning your division. It's, yep. That's where it starts. You got to beat yep. your neighbors. Yep. That's how it is. Yeah, and that that's been the hard thing for the for for Lions fans. It's never been done. Mm -hmm. We had Barry Sanders, Calvin Johnson. Now yeah. we have Matthew Stafford, and we still can't win the division. Let yeah. alone anything else. And it's but but it's not like it's been an easy division though either. Like that's the no, thing. Like you know, it, it's weird where it's like Green Bay's on top with Rodgers who's feeling it, or it's Minnesota just pounding the rock down your throat with Dalvin Cook, or it's Chicago with this defense. You're like, how are we supposed to beat Chicago's defense at Soldier Field in mid December? Like that's mm -hmm. a tough task to do. So I Detroit, yeah, exactly. You know, and so I think it's it's like. And this is kind of the big thing that I think needs to happen with Detroit is that you have teams in the NFC North who have that identity. Like Chicago's got that defense. Green Bay's yeah. got that offense. Minnesota's got that running game. What's Detroit got? And hey, that's the Patriot way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so <laughs> it's, um, that's really, I think one of the bigger things that Patricia really needs to work on is like, who, who are we as a team? Like, are we going to go and sling it and you better put up 30 to beat us? Or are we going to be a team who, you know, we can pound the rock a little bit this year. That's kind of what I'm really interested to see with Detroit for, you know, this upcoming year, when, whenever it is, is, you know, what, what's that identity? Are, are you going to, is it going to be, you know, that two running back system where like, Hey, we got two workhorses who are going to pound the rock and Matty Stafford is always ready to uncork one. Uh, or, or is it going to be, you know, we're going to, we're going to air it out. We're going to pick you apart underneath. And, you know, we got the defense to boot, you know, what, what is going to be the identity of Detroit moving forward? I that's agree. really I what agree. I'm interested and that's to been see. Our history. Mm -hmm. We brought in Mike Martz because we brought St. Louis's yeah. thing here. We yep. brought in so, uh, the uh, New Orleans Saints offense, for God's yeah. sake. And that didn't <laughs> work. And then we bring in the Patriot way. What's the Lions way? And that's the thing I've been had a hard time with Patricia and Quinn and, and all the other ones because it's like it's not our identity. Mm -hmm. Patricia yeah. wants to stop the run and run the ball. I know he does. Mm -hmm. and I love that because that will set up play action with Matthew Stafford and we'll set yeah. up – being able to keep that defense off the field, the four minute drives, you know, four minutes yeah. left in the game and, and, you know, just running out the clock cause you can pound the rock. 
I want that here. Yeah. You know, but I want our identity. Exactly. And that's, that's, that's what that fan base needs. That's what, you know, this fan base, that Detroit fan base, like they, they need the identity. And I think it's not going to be like, that's one of the things that's really unique about new England was like, you looked at the early 2000s with Brady and it was like, you know, Brady could air it out, but they also had this defense that was smash mouth defense. They had, you know, yep. big, bad dudes in the secondary, Ty Law, Lawyer Malloy, Rodney Harrison, yep. Asante Sammy, what these corners who are like, we're going to man up. Good luck, you know, completing yep. balls downfield against us. Um, and then, but their identity changed. And that to me was what was so phenomenal about New England is they literally had this span from, you know, early 2000s to about 2010-ish, where that's when it was like, hey, you know, Ellis Hobbs isn't getting it done on the outside. Like we have to put up the new England had to put up 42 sometimes to beat teams Yeah, and they could do it with a guy like Brady, but then it changed and they really started to focus on, okay, we need to be great with situational football. And that to me is one of the biggest deal breakers. And you look at you like you look at that Malcolm Butler pick and that was great situational football that got yep. them there. And that, you know what I mean? And it wasn't just that play, but it was, you know, the third and eight where they ran a stun up front and Rob Ninkovich gets a sack. It's great situational football that puts you in the position to make those plays. And so, that's where the Lions lack. Mm -hmm. It's that third down play that we really need. It's the hands to the chest penalties. Yeah. That, uh, uh, Trey Flowers. He goes to the official and says, hey, you know what? I, my hand placement, I, I thought I had him here. And as oh, he showed him. He's like, oh, okay, I'll adjust that. And they call it again. Yeah. Just crushing it, penalties. Yeah, the, now, the, the zebras yeah. can kill a kill moment. They can kill a game, man. They really can. They and that's really what can. we have had, I mean, since I've been watching this team. And yeah. It's been a long time. It, and so I want to ask you this. You're an outsider looking in. A lot mm -hmm. of times us Lions fans get really jaded. It's Detroit versus everybody and you yeah. know, the 12th man in Green Bay. And <laughs> you yeah, know what I, I mean, mean tough to deny. Do you see that or, you, or is it just something that we're kind of like, you know, because you know, the Packers will come back with this, uh, oh, you guys are just whining because you're losers and mm -hmm. all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> what do you see? So – I remember, you know, specifically this year, it's kind of funny how everything ended up working out with, you know, kind of breaking into like the Detroit sports line talking with you guys. Cause I remember being at, a, I was, I was at my work. I was at a bar. I was, um, you know, I was eating food with my girlfriend there and we were watching the, the lions game. And we, I like, I remember watching that Trey flowers and I was like, first yeah. off, I hate that penalty called in the trenches. I hate I that. Cause it's like, dude, it's, it's football, man. Like it's physical. Like you're trying to fire off. You're trying to punch, you're trying to get extension. So it's like, first off, I hate that call. And I'm like, Oh my God. And then, you know, you're going to see it. So I watch it and I'm like, that's not even close to hands of the face. Yep. So it's in a way, do I think that, yeah, there's sometimes when you're, you're in your own head and you're like, dude, we're just getting boned on this stuff. And then, you know, you go back and watch it. And I remember you guys were telling me about that. Um, they had another face mask that was called on Rogers when he completed that Hail Mary, like the yeah. two plays before, I think. Yeah, there was zero time on the clock. We had won the game, and then they called that face mask penalty. He ain't got a Hail Mary. Yeah, and, and, you know, you're like, you're like, all right, at some point, like, we're not taking crazy pills. There's something going on here. And, like, Calvin I, Johnson on his butt in the end zone with the ball in his hand, but that's not a completed catch. First game of the year in Chicago. Yeah. Seattle Seahawks batted ball incident. Yeah, um, that's another one. And, it, like, that one. Texans come to Detroit Thanksgiving Day. The guy's knee is clearly down. He gets up, runs for a touchdown. We throw the challenge flag. So it was illegal for us to throw the challenge flag. So now they can't review it, and we get a 15-yard penalty on top of them scoring. Yeah. Illegally. It's 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 one of those things where, at some like, from what I've seen and what I've, like, gone back and watched, either the refs just have an off game when they're, you know, throwing flags out there against Detroit or like there's I hate to say conspiracy I hate to say the C word conspiracy but it's tough it's tough to sit there and deny it when you look at call after call like you you and I just listed off five calls That's that not literally even the Golden Tate one the right the, uh Dallas Cowboy game playoffs where this guy's called face guarding and he's like all over a guy it hits him in the back the ball does they throw the flag pick it up say oh no not a penalty yeah, it's it's stuff like that where and that's it's on third down, massive plays, massive yeah. game changing plays where yeah. time and time again, Detroit's getting screwed. Yeah. So when we talk about identity, right, and we sit there and go, you yeah, know, Detroit versus everybody, 
your identity, like if I'm Patricia, like my, like what I'm telling these guys day one is like, look, people don't want us to succeed. Like our identity, we need to be like the Detroit versus everybody. You need to embody. That's one of the things that kind of ties in with that Patriot way. Cause it got to a point people don't like seeing the Patriots win anymore. People are right. sick and tired of right. it. And I understand, dude, like I, I understand that. Like people like don't Red like, Ridge. exactly. Like at yeah. some point you're like, dude, we're tired. Okay. We're tired of seeing, you know, Brady, here we go again, Brady for 300. And it's like, you, you have to embrace that and not necessarily be the bad guy where you're kind of, you know, towing the line of legal, illegal, but like embrace that, you know, like people don't want to see you win. We got to beat, you know, two different entities on the field. We got to beat whoever we're playing, who's on the other sideline. We got to beat the refs. We got to play great, clean, disciplined football. And we got to be three steps ahead of whatever those guys are going to do. So this happened in Muskegon, right? This ref thing mm -hmm. in, in our, thing and what our COVID, what our identity decided they decided the next year what they did was they they signed every goon in the entire league i'm not <laughs> kidding you and they just beat the crap out of every team we were the we, were, we finished last but we beat the holy we hell out of people. every yeah. team in the entire year just to just to send a message yeah that's what you, we did you love it and i don't know if we go the other way and say you know, like Sue or something like that. Let's just be like the Pistons. Let's just be the bad boys and own it and say, you know what? Fine. You want us to be that way? You're going to call it anyway. Yep. Let's just do what we do. In a weird way, there's something to that. There's something yep. to being the bad boys, yep. you know, and that's it. But once again, you're developing that identity, you know, and if you, if, you know, you get the, you get Stenberg out there and you get Jonah Jackson, these two dudes yep. who can pound the rock and you're like, we're, we're going to run the ball, run the ball 35 times. Yep. You know what I mean? Find a way to stop it. It's coming right here. You know, and there's something that's very cliche about that. But at the same time, if you can build that identity in Detroit, not only are you giving that team something to rally behind, but you give that fan base something to rally behind. And that's what Detroit needs right now. They, they, they need that identity. They need to have that faith going in on Sundays. You know, they need fired up, you know. So, but anyway, hey man, that's, yeah. I, I appreciate this so much. This has been oh, so much fun. I think this we is could awesome. probably have this show for the next three hours. But... Yeah. We have lives, unfortunately. Yeah. And, and uh, hey, uh, Hook Cam, tell me where you we can find you uh, on YouTube or social media or wherever you want to put out. It's the floor is yours, man. Yeah. So first and foremost, thank you for having me on. And, uh, you know, okay. the, the DSA in general has been so welcoming, such good, good people that we, we need in this world, you know, and it's like. I go back to that first interaction with Luke and that could have gone one of two ways. And like, he was very welcoming and everybody that I've met since then, who has been a part of the DSA has been very welcoming. And I can't thank you guys for that enough. Um, where you guys can find me though, if there's people out there who, who, you know, want to hear me ramble more, <laughs> um, my YouTube channel is, uh, the hook cam. It's just the hook cam. Look it up and you'll see uh, my, my little avatar there. And then, um, I'm trying to, trying to be a, I'm not really trying to be more active on Twitter, but you can hit me on Twitter, the hook cam, ask me any football question you want. I'm always down to talk ball. Um, and then I have an Instagram. I don't use it a ton. I, early on, I was just like, let's make it all and let's see what sticks and really YouTube stuck more than anything. So, but that's where people can find me, man. I'm always happy to talk. I really appreciate you being here. It was a wonderful show. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel and uh, we'll see you later and we're out. <laughs>